This is a Chrysler PT Cruiser. And this is 10 pounds of red glitter. What's the worst that could happen? Good afternoon guys and welcome back to PA Street Scene. For those of you that are new here, my name is Derek. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you can keep up with my latest content. Today, I'm practicing my social distancing. I hope that everyone's doing okay during this coronavirus quarantine. I live in Pennsylvania, so we're pretty well quarantined. Uh, they haven't issued a, a stay put kind of mandate or anything yet, so we have been staying at the house a lot more, but I had a project that I wanted to do, so I'm here by myself in the garage, and uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, if you can see behind me, we are working today on my PT Cruiser. Now this car, honestly, to be 100% with you guys, is on its last legs. I don't think there's going to be much, much more with this PT Cruiser. Um, the previous owner before me really beat the crap out of this car, and it's been a great point A to point B for a while, but it's soon going to be time to, to put her down and put her out of her misery. But before we do that, I thought it would be fun to play around a little bit. Um, I've been looking at videos for a while now that talk about metal flake and bass boat paint jobs like they had on the old hot rods, and it's always... I've always been curious about whether or not you had to use the really expensive metal flake products or if you could get the same effect for cheaper with just a craft grade glitter. Um, granted, it's not going to be the same um, effect as in a professional doing it and doing it with automotive materials, but for a budget Terry project on a daily driver beater, I thought it would be fun. So in October, when my birthday rolled around, my mom wanted to know what to get me for my birthday. And I jokingly said, uh, get me 10 pounds of glitter. Well, she took me for my word. And this is 10 pounds of red craft grade glitter. So what we're going to do, because as you can see, like all other Chryslers from this generation, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, all the products from this generation, we have the same issues with clear coat that they're all well known for. I'm not going to take the time to sand it because I really don't care enough. Like I said, I don't see us having this car much longer and I don't see us selling it to anyone. Um, so it's probably destined for the junkyard when we're done with it. But um, between the peeling clear coat and then the leftover residue from the duct tape that's still kind of there, um, we're just going to cover it all up with adhesive and glitter. So I went to the store. Home Depot actually because they were one of the only places still left and bought this contact cement from DAP or DAP uh, Weldwood and it's supposed to be heat resistant and uh, water resistant and a whole bunch of other things that would be great for putting it on a car. So the goal is to do everything from the A pillar forward and then depending on how much glitter is left I have a lot of uh, I have a fun idea I want to do for the, the front doors. So with that said, I've already got the headlights and the fog lights taped off, and I'm going to get started. All right, so we're all ready to go. I've got the glue ready to go. I've got three things of glitter. I've got my roller. Grab a brush quick. I'm going to start with the hood. I think that'll give us a good indication of how far the glue and the glitter are both going to stretch. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So wish me luck. All right, guys, I got you on handheld mode. I'm going to take you for a quick rock walk around so you can see. It's so silly, but I love it. Like, it's not perfectly flat, but a lot of it, I think, is just piles of loose glitter that aren't ready. I'm going to have to blow it off or do something with a, a shop vac, maybe, to get it all cleaned off before I leave. But I think it's funny. You guys know me. I like weird stuff. And all this on the fender is just fallout. Same on the bumper. I'm going to have to brush that off before I start. But, um, but yeah, so far, so good. And it's not using nearly as much glitter as I thought, so I'm probably going to have some left over, which is fine by me. Um, I can always find a, a use for red glitter. Um, at this time, I think I'm going to leave the grill silver, 
just to provide some contrast. If I decide I don't like it later, I can always go back and cover it up. So I'm just going to do the fenders on the sides and the bumper, and then we can move on to the really fun stuff. And then before I'm done, I'll just do any touch-up that needs done, and we'll go from there. Alright, so here is where we are right now. I'm into about hour three of this. It's going pretty well, but it's hard to tell where there's thin spots or not until I start messing around with it. Um, but the hood and both fenders appear to be done. I was thinking it was going to lay a bit more flat, but it actually is laying more kind of like a, a crushed velvet. And who knows, once, once I get all the loose... Um, loose glitter off it may lay a little bit more flat, but I still like it. I think it's a lot of fun I'm sure it's gonna be a great conversation starter um, I'm kind of sick of laying down glitter for a couple of minutes So I'm going to take a break from that as you can see there's like a thin spot here where I have to do some touch-up um, But next up is my plans for the doors and that is to go old-school hot rod flames um, They're not gonna go very far back the door. I just wanted it to be kind of like a fun transition from the fender back to the door um, I used to draw flames on everything when I was a kid. Um, I loved flames on cars. I still do. Um, my grandfather on my dad's side, uh, rest in peace to him, used to let me paint flames on all of his cars uh, with spray paint. Uh, looking back on it, probably not the best judgment on his part, but it was just something that he enjoyed. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's going to be a little bit of an homage to him and just a little bit of an homage to my love of flames. And I was going to make up stencils, but now that I'm looking at it, I really hadn't thought about this fender bubble. So I think I'm just gonna freehand it. So let's see how it goes. Alright guys, so the other side is done, we have flames, if you can tell there's like a dark area down in the center, I'm going to need to do some touch up on that um, at some point tomorrow, and there's a couple little areas that are going to need some clean up with maybe some acetone tomorrow before I show you guys the final product. But other than that, everything's done with the exception of the bumper. So I'm pretty excited to get this done, I'm actually quite sick of working on it, um, let me turn you around here and try to focus. I think I've been working on this now for about five-ish hours and I'm sick of glitter and I'm sick of this adhesive. Thank God the area I'm working in is really well ventilated, um, mostly just because it's an older building and big. But uh, yeah, I'm ready to be done. <laughs> um, I'm also excited to see how it turns out. So let's move on to the part that I was dreading most, which is the bumper. Um, also, I can't remember if I said it earlier in the video or not, but I had intended to leave the grill silver. However, I managed to get some glue on it and some glitter attached, so I just decided to go full in. Um, so it is what it is. The bumper is going to be kind of a pain because of that grill section down in the bottom, but uh, it should go pretty fast. 10 pounds of glitter was exactly how much this took, surprisingly. Um, I've been reusing some of the fallout on the floor. It looks like I murdered some fairies or something under here because there's just 
blood splatter of glitter everywhere. But using these reusable paint tray liners, I was able to scoop a bunch of it up and I still have about a third of a container left. So it should be just enough to get it done. I'm excited to get it done. It's already past nine o'clock. I'm ready to go home. So let's get back to work. Several days later. All right guys, so it's been a couple days since I last filmed with you. That was Sunday, today is Thursday because in Pennsylvania where I live, it has been raining like crazy. Um, after I got done filming with you, um, I had to deal with how to get the loose powder, or the loose glitter off the car. Uh, the solution I came up with for that was attaching the soft bristle brush to my vacuum and running it gently over the glitter, um, which did reveal a couple bare spots and a couple issues that were going to need attended to. Um, so I knew that was going to be an issue, so I locked the car in my storage unit for a couple of days, let it cure, and figured once the, once the weather broke, I would get a chance to go back into it. But unfortunately, like all good plans, it went from good to bad to worse. So I came over uh, yesterday, I went and found some more glitter because I had run out. I um, was really excited that I found a bunch. Most craft stores are not open at this time. Um, I was able to find what I needed at Walmart, or so I thought. Today, I went back into the storage unit. I was preparing to do touch-up work and realized I bought the wrong glitter. Yes, there are different kinds of glitters, different shades, different colors, different sizes. So, had to make another trip to Walmart um, and got the right kind, got the ultra fine. Started doing touch-up work on it and realized it was the wrong shade of red. So with that and everything else, and just looking at how it was laying, and I'll show you guys in a couple minutes, I'll let you share in my shame. Um, it's just not what I was hoping for. And I knew that this was gonna be kind of like a silly project, it's my daily beater, but I do have to drive it, so I want it to look at least somewhat good. And the thing about it is, I'll just turn you around and quit talking so you can see. From about 10 feet away, it looks pretty good. There are some areas where I didn't get, like in the lower, the lower uh, fog light area, you can see there's some blue and yellow shining through there. But that's not a big deal. Um, the issue I have with it is it's not laying very uniform. And that fine glitter that I got, remember how we were talking about different colors of red? Yep, found that out the hard way too. So it's really hard to see in this footage, which is probably not a bad thing because it's pretty embarrassing. But the stuff we got today was called Ruby. And it's just a shade more pink than the rest. But as you can see, it's kind of laying haphazardly. It's not as pretty as I wanted. Like I said, from, from about 10 feet, looks great. But it definitely needs some more work. Um, I need to sit at the drawing board again. I promise you there's gonna be a part two of this video, but this was already long enough. Um, I can definitely tell you why there are professionals who do this, and I definitely would not recommend this as the way to go. I figured it wouldn't turn out 100%. I didn't realize it was gonna be such a pain. Um, but now the next time you see me working on it, it's going to be me trying to figure out how to fix it. Um, and I think there's a couple different ways I could do it. I just need to figure out which one's going to be the most economic and which one's going to be the easiest to pull off. Um, but I'm excited to see how it turns out finally. I think it's really close to where it needs to be. But for now, it's going to stay in the locker and I'm going to get some more fun out of the R32 of daily driving for a couple more days. So I want to thank you guys again for uh, watching my videos and supporting my channel. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at PA Street Scene. Uh, make sure that you're washing your hands, practicing social distancing, you know, COVID is still around. So uh, with that said, I hope you have a great day. Take care and I'll see you next time.